I'd like to welcome you all. My name is Mo Bhandari, Editor-in-Chief of Ortho Evidence, and I'm here with two uh, longtime collaborators, friends, and colleagues. Um, and today our world tour takes us to Spain. And let me just remind you again about what this tour is about. We are trying to be a little different than the large scale webinars that you may be used to in, in favor of a smaller interactive discussion and a shorter time period. So we have about 30 minutes or so we're gonna to spend today focusing on a critical area uh, and a critical issue. Let me also remind you, if you don't mind, to stay off, um, stay muted and off video during the presentation phase, which should be about 10 to 15 minutes. And we would encourage you then to come back onto video where we'll encourage a discussion and a uh, debate thereafter uh, for a short period uh, afterwards. Also, I'd like to remind you all that um, this World Series tour again that we're doing in a, in a way is, um, has many more events still scheduled. So if you enjoy today, uh, please do a look at some of the additional ones that are remaining in the few days to come and certainly sign up uh, the same way you signed up for this event. Now, without further ado, today we discuss important interoperative procedures to prevent periprosthetic and joint infection. And here's the point. I mean, when we think about joint infection, it is the single most serious consequence of arthroplasty. We have two wonderful uh, colleagues who are able to present this for us. And you can see here by the credentials, both are eminently capable. Um, Professor uh, Joanne Minguel and Ernesto Guerra, consultant in orthopedic trauma surgery, both working in Barcelona at the Valdebron Hospital. Now, I will let them uh, proceed with a presentation after which we will have a discussion. Gentlemen, I believe Dr. Guerra will present first. Welcome. Okay, is, can you see the, the screen? Absolutely, yeah, excellent, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you for the invitation, Mo. It's a pleasure again to be in Ortho Evidence. Interoperative mm -hmm. irrigation to prevent periprosthetic joint infection is a recent uh, procedure to prevent these important infections. As you all know, Periprosthetic joint infection is not only a, a, a great complication in arthroplasty, it is also a high burden for the surgical health care, but additionally, it represents a predictor of mortality. He survive, its survival is even worse than most of the, some of the most frequent malignancies. Intraoperatively, the surgeons can adopt different options to prevent infection, like um, there are many of one. We're going to treat only surgical irrigation solutions and antibiotic loaded bone cement. Evidence uh, has shown that in trauma, the, uh, has revealed the ideal solution, which is the ideal solution in open fracture, to prevent infections in open fractures, like a flow, in flow study, it has already been uh, demonstrated. Uh, it is time to demonstrate also which is the best antiseptic to use in, for irrigation solutions to prevent periprosthetic joint infections. This is the international consensus meeting of 2018, uh, the question regarding irrigation solutions. And the recommendation was, was that this is an, um, there is an ample evidence to support the use of a sterile dilute povidone for surgical irrigation. The recommendation was strong. And additionally, it was, the recommendation was against to use antibiotic in the surgical irrigations, especially because, in the, because of the fear to create resistances to the microorganisms, and it is suggested by most of the, some of the most important guidelines. The advantage to use antiseptics in irrigation, there are many, but the concern is that the antiseptics has an inherent cytotoxicity. This cytotoxicity is diminished with the dilution, the concentration, concentration of the antiseptic used to, for the irrigation 
In this way, we can prevent uh, wound healing and tendon healing problems, and keeping or retaining the same bactericidal load reduction. There is a uh, in vitro, many in vitro studies that have uh, reported that diluted betadine is, so, is the optimal antiseptic to prevent infection. And also some experimental studies that has demonstrated that chlorhexidine diluted can be also used for irrigation. So povidone and chlorhexidine are the most used, sorry, the most used, the most used uh, antiseptic to do irrigation. And with a specific concentration, the wound healing problems is avoided. And this is the way how the delivery method should be done. There are 11, uh, Trail, uh, studies that has demonstrated that antiseptics like betadine and chlorhexidine should be used. This is only focused in arthroplasty. There is one randomized control trail and a rigorous meta-analysis. We're going to mention only the most outstanding of these ones. Craig de Levaille from Roche Institute uh, was the one that demonstrated that irrigation with beta-9 was effective to use to decrease uh, the rate of inflation. He reported that it was six times lower the inflation rate using irrigation with beta-9, with diluted beta-9, uh, comparing with saline. In these two uh, cohort studies, level three studies from Mayo Clinic, they didn't find any difference between the different irrigation solutions. These are two studies using diluted chlorhexidine, and one demonstrated that it is the, it is the same same rate of infection using comparing with tanang and the other one that is more recent developed that it is a good antiseptic to prevent infection. This is the only randomized controlled trial focusing arthroplasty that it was done in revisions from the same sector, center from Roche Institute. Near 500 revisions patients were studied at 90 days follow up and he demonstrated that the rate of, in, of infection using the beta-9 was a, extremely lower comparing to the control trail and they conclude that it is a simple, safe, and effective measure to reduce surgical site infection. This is a rigorous meta-analysis that was uh, published this year. It analyzed near 30,000 patients, um, studying uh, uh, 10 cohort studies and one randomized control trial. And this is the statistical analysis demonstrating that the confidence in interval was very huge using betadine and chlorhexidine. And the conclusion was that antiseptic irrigation with both solutions may decrease the rate of periprosthetic young infections in primary and revisions arthroplasty, but the wide intervals, confidence interval, and the heterogeneity among the studies rendered conclusions unreliable. Regarding irrigation pressure, flow study demonstrated that there was no any difference to prevent surgical site infections in open fractions with different, different pressures. And in total joint arthroplastic surgery, uh, the evidence is no, no clear, uh, revealing which kind of pressure should be used. As a summary of this talk, there is no standard of care. Betadine and chlorhexidine may decrease the rate of periprosthetic joint infections in primary and revision surgeries. Probably is reasonable to use uh, both antiseptics, any of those antiseptics, because it is a cheap procedure. Uh, but the evidence is at this time is inconclusive. Um, 
uh, definitively a large sample study is needed. And that's all. Thank you. Wonderful, Dr. Garrow. We'll just move to uh, Joanne for his presentation, then we'll go to a discussion. Perfect. Hi, welcome to the Insights World Tour. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Insights World Tour. Thank you very much, Mo, and uh, uh, Orthobedins team. It's a pleasure to be with you and work with you, as you as you say. And thank you uh, for this kind of uh, issue that very that is very important for us. First, uh, the first slide I will show you our our rate of infection during the last time. We have a well-controlled infection, less than 2%, but at the end of 2017, we have an increase of 3%, but in the first quarter of 2018, an alarming increase. We have very worried about this. Uh, some authors uh, uh, say and publish the same, uh, the same increase in the future years and, uh, years, and we need to be worried about this. Our, the prevention of infection is one of our uh, main healthcare objectives. We have the visit of Habat Parvici and we have implemented education with this to avoid infection. And as you know, uh, selection of the patient and optimization of the patient is very critical. The last year, uh, before our increase in infection, we have decreased the high risk patient that we have operated on from 15 to 5%. And now, our infection rate is less than 2%. But we, are, we want to talk about intraoperative measures, like I said, uh, Ernesto, especially antibiotic loaded semen. And I will try to uh, uh, respond to these uh, issues, the evidence, the concern using semen, and if you did more studies. In the last consensus, one of the more uh, discussions uh, important discussion was the evidence about the, the using antibiotic load bone semen in joint arthroplasty. And in the first question, there was no consensus. The first question is about if there is enough evidence. And then uh, they make a second question, very clear, and a more clear uh, question, that is about is the useful the using uh, antibiotic load bone semen in high risk patients. Here, there, there are a super majority a strong consensus. And, but la, the literature are very confusing. If you know the studies published in, in Europe favors the use of antibiotic low bone semen, but in North America and in Canada, uh, there is a not a consensus. This is the, the called the transatlantic paradox. But if you see in the top of the pyramid of the evidence, there are only uh, four meta-analyses that are publishing Two of them are very old meta-analysis, and the meta analysis from Sebastian and Nectari are well, well conducted, but in general, all the meta-analysis show a reduction, in general, it's the same reduction of around 50%, that it means a reduction from 2% to 1%. The, the, the one and two and three meta-analysis, the first meta-analysis are uh, significant, but the last, the, the best uh, conducted from Nectari, is not significant. In general, all the meta-analysis favors gentamicin as a, uh, that, uh, the most antibiotic and maybe the most useful. And uh, the last meta-analysis favors also high dose than uh, antibiotic. The meta-analysis of, of Parvici, I said before, is a very old one. The studies are be, uh, after 2000. This meta-analysis only includes hip and gentamicin and shows a reduction about 50% of infection and of prevision, but the limitation is the old paper of this study. The second study by one in 2013, this includes hip and knee, and also includes uh, patients treated with gentamicin and, and cefuroxime. And also this meta-analysis shows a reduction around 50% of infection. But uh, on uh, this, this study shows this better gentamicin was superior to cefuroxime. And also, this study says that the prevention is higher in total hip arthroplasty than in total knee arthroplasty. The limitation of this study is there are uh, a positive of randomized control 
uh, trials, especially long terms, a lot of risk of buyers, all the publications, as I said before, and a lot of heterogeneity in the studies. The study of Sebastian is a, a new study. This uh, a, a well-conducted study also shows a reduction in deep, inf in deep infection in patients treated with antibiotic loaded bone semen, but also there are several limitations like different diagnostic criteria and a lot of heterogeneity. And this uh, uh, author recommends future studies with more longer follow-up, maybe a cluster randomization of the patients. And this is, um, author says that is interesting to uh, study the benefit of cefuroxime because I, I said before, the antibiotic most used is uh, gentamicin. You can see that high heterogeneity of this study includes hips, knees, different brands. This is uh, uh, because the brands are totally different, different doses of antibiotic, different systemic antibiotic, and different follow-up. The last uh, meta-analysis that I will comment is from Ectiari, maybe it's the best meta-analysis with a very high methodological level. She shows also a potential benefit, but not significant. He favors high doses semen uh, um, than low dose. And she concludes also that there is a need for a large multicenter adequately powered studies. You can see the high risk uh, risk of bias of these studies, including this meta-analysis, especially in blinding and random sequence generation. And what about registries? In general, registries uh, favors the use of antibiotic load bone semen. In general, the reduction in all the registries is around 50%. And is, I want to notice that it's very interesting the reduction in amyartroplasty with high dose antibiotics uh, and is need to be uh, account into account this. About the concept using antibiotic low bone semen, there are antim antimicrobial resistance and toxicity and allergies. A recent meta analysis uh, from a Spanish uh, doctor, Dr. San Ruiz from Madrid, she conclu he concludes that there are no clinical evidence of development of resistances. And as you know, in Scandinavia, a countries where there are uh, the, uh, the use of antibiotic low bone semen is very common. The, the index of uh, antibiotic resistance is, is lower. Also interesting that high dose uh, of antibiotic is better for deep infection are also, it protects uh, and avoids resistances. This is very interesting to know. And also the combination therapy is more effective and uh, also decreased the risk of resistances. Uh, uh, about toxicity, there are no clinical reports about toxicity in prophylactic purpose. Also, in high dose species in revision, there are uh, uh, papers that uh, say there is enough safety. And only we need to recommend to avoid combination of high dose local antibiotic and uh, systemic in patients with high, high risk. Uh, in relation to cost, the extra cost of using antibiotic low bone semen is $300, and the extra cost of revision surgery uh, for aseptic uh, compared with a, a septic is around or more than 30,000 Canadian dollars. And in general, uh, the majority of publications say that it's cost effective. Ectari, in their meta analysis, says that only a reduction of 25% is, is, is not a too much reduction, will result in, in saving money. And uh, to finish, uh, future directions. Uh, it's clear that we need uh, better uh, studies. The studies need to include uh, different variables like type and dose of antibiotic using semen, semen brands. The brands are totally different. Semen mix and delivery systems, we need to be uh, taken into account. Operative side, knee or hip, or revision or not. Type of an, and timing of parallel systemic antibiotic administration anesthetic procedure, surgical approach, surgery time, duration of follow-up, and type of hospital. And the outcomes indicators is not only deep infection and aseptic and losing, you need to be into account antibiotic resistance, allergic complication, risk of renal failure, and cost benefit. All the studies and a well-conducted study need to, to, to take into account these important uh, items. And for conclusions, there is a tendency to favor the use of antibiotic low bone sem semen to prevent periprosthetic joint infection, especially in high risk patients, but we need a high quality, well-designed, multicentric 
randomized control trials with clear primary and secondary objectives. And thank you very much for your attention. Wonderful, thank you. And what I might ask is for those of us who are in this small group discussion today, if some of you feel comfortable coming back on video and um, for those of you who can, and then what we'll do is we'll just have a, um, a discussion and feel free for all of you um, to uh, ask questions and or contribute uh, thoughts, comments, uh, and or your own personal experiences. While we wait for some of you to, to get involved, let me just begin by first thanking you both for a thoughtful presentation. Because, you know, the truth is, and, and here's a broader question to both of you, Joanne and Ernesto. Why do you think with so many total joint replacements that occur worldwide, and the fact that infection is by far uh, unified as one of the more devastating complications we have, why we haven't had what would seem to be an obvious collaboration to do a very large trial. I know we've done some trials that are, you suggest are in the few thousands, but with the number of joints that occur, doing the size of a trial that would be similar to the cardiovascular studies of 10,000 patients should have been done years ago. Why do you feel um, that we have yet to do that study? Uh, well, one of the... Um interesting of this this uh, insight is maybe to us to you no maybe with a, a high experience in large randomized controlled trials maybe it's need is very interesting because it's a, a, a very high uh, uh, health problem and I think we need to resolve these questions and maybe we need a, a very well conducted trial maybe with 10,000 I don't know uh, it, it need to be well powered no and well designed. But maybe because you need to be into account very variables, not only cell membrane, etc., duration of follow-up, very well conducted, stratification of risk. Uh, this need to be very methodological because if you can see my in my presentation, the problem of the of all the studies is the heterogeneity of the studies. It's difficult to to have conclusion. I, and I, I I think that we need a very maybe a, a first pilot study and then a very a very large because maybe this is the very, very important, uh, this issue. And it's very worried because we have an increase, very alarming increase in the beginning of 2018, or I said before, around 6%. We, uh, well, I think we need, maybe it's a multi-strategy to prevent infection, but we need to resolve some questions. No, oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I guess the point I, I make is that when we look at um, our history in fracture care, in fracture care, um, it wasn't that long ago, less than 20 years ago, you didn't have large 1,000, 2,000 patient studies. Now you're looking at global collaborations that are occurring in which they're looking at problems that are important to everybody and answering those questions. And you know, you're seeing 10,000 patients being recruited in trials um, reasonably routinely now because of these collaborations. So it seems to me that we just have to be you know, agreeing on what, um, what the target should be. So for those of you who are listening in, is it reasonable to, to think of still a reasonable target for testing to be um, testing antibiotic joint, um, uh, you know, antibiotic loaded cement and irrigation? To me, it seems like a reasonable target, but I'm wondering if others have the same feeling. Oh, I just, uh, Ernesto, you just have to unmute. It is unbelievable how the uh, orthopedic community has not uh, done yet been a large series of uh, good studies regarding these issues. Uh, the orthopedic literature only is, uh, has demonstrated only the, most of the studies are level three studies. Um, probably the, I think that probably is the tendency in Europe and the tendency in, the tendency in North America, regarding, especially regarding the antibiotic loaded cement. In the international consensus meeting, when the, this question was taken to the audience, it was not a debate. It was practically a battle between the tendency from Europe 
defending the antibiotic loaded bone cement and the tendency from uh, America uh, saying that it was not beneficial. Uh, so, so, the, so Ernesto, let me ask you this. What do you think, what was the, um, what do you think was the challenge? Like, why is it that the counterpart to antibiotics meant? So when you say that there was a battle, what was the primary concern? Was it, oh, there's just, it doesn't work, there's no evidence, or was it more a concern of antibiotic resistance? What was the primary reservation? I think, it, definitely, I think it was a economical issue. Okay. It increased the cost of the primary or the revision surgeries, yeah. Understood. So I just noted that Dr. Desai, you've joined us. Thanks for coming. Um, you seem to think both are important issues. Is there, when you think about the prevention of infection or joint infection, do you have a sense of which of these two um, treatments, whether it's the type of um, irrigation solution or the type of cement we use, do you have a sense of any of these being more important than the other, or do you believe they're both equally important? If we're designing a future study, what would you put your so-called uh, faith in? I think they are both important. Oh, but oh, oh, I'm just gonna, yeah, Dr. Oh, yeah, we're, sorry, yeah, sorry, let's wait for sorry, Dr. Desai here. Yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 no, no problem. Sorry. I think I would put Desai, my faith okay. in the antibiotic cement in the high risk cases. Understood. And, and, I know, and I know there's been a, a debate as well, right? There's been a debate as well of whether we should be even considering it for primary, but even primary total knee uh, and hip, you know, I mean, the, it's, the infection rate, even though it seems smaller, even if it's under 2%, that is still relatively significant in a large population of patients. You know, when we look at um, MI, you know, heart attacks, and we look at treatments, Historically, you know, MI rates were to a few percent and big, big trials were trying to get those down to under 1%, but that's a 50, in some cases, more than a 50% reduction in the risk of having a, an MI. So, you know, when you think of that, that's massive. And I think we sometimes forget that how many joints are put in around the world and how even a few, a less than a percent difference uh, could actually be a meaningful cost and also a meaningful quality of life difference. No, I, I want to a question. Yes. In the audience, in the audience, as I said before, there are uh, Dr. Pedro Inerejos and Dr. Xavi Pelfort that are conducted uh, or published in 2013 in, in JBGS, the most, la the largest randomized controlled trial with uh, 3,000 patients. Maybe he can explain uh, his experience on maybe to have some light in this in this problem. Pedro, you can, or Xavier Pelfort, you can. Yes, wonderful, thank you. <laughs> yes. Is, is, a, is a friend of us. <laughs> can you listen to me? We can, thank you, Pedro, for joining yes. us. Uh, that, uh, that study was done uh, with uh, an uh, unusual uh, antibiotic uh, combination that was erythromycin and colistin, and probably, uh, this is uh, the one of the uh, the biggest uh, limitations of the study. The, the, this is not the the usual antibiotics than uh, um, used in in uh, in total knees. Uh, we we did it uh, with uh, this combination of antibiotics because of uh, our fear about the resistance. Uh, uh, because mm -hmm. erythromycin and colistin are antibiotics that are not used to treat infections when uh, when uh, when they they are diagnosed, and that's why uh, we we used uh, this kind of, of combination of antibiotics. Anyway, I, my feeling is that uh, in total hips there is an absolute uh, evidence about the reduction in the, in the rate of infection. But uh, in the knees, uh, if there is a benefit, it's uh, um, smaller. Perhaps because the, 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 um, the quantity of the, the grams of uh, cement used in, in a primary total knee uh, um, are very, uh, are perhaps 15 to 20 grams of, of uh, cement and not um, uh, the, the same uh, quantity as, as in a total uh, heap, uh, a cemented total heap. 
And can I ask so, you? So my, okay. my, my feeling is that uh, probably uh, studies must be different from knees than uh, from hips and mm -hmm. not uh, uh, mixed all together. Mm -hmm. Right. So also, Pedro, could we do the following? Could, could you do a very large study, but also what we would say stratify, which would be yes. sure that we do yes. analysis separate on hips and knees uh, yes. as a way to include both. And also, what's your thinking on primary versus revision? You know, when we look at these different treatments, there's also debate about should you include just, you know, the more complex revision cases, or do we also include all primaries? Uh, um our uh, routine uh, use, and I, I think that in uh, in almost everywhere, uh, for revision, there are uh, higher risk patients uh, with longer uh, uh, surgeries. Um, probably uh, most of these cases are un undiagnosed uh, septic cases, and it's better to use antibiotic in, in every revision. Understood. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yes. In a, in a publish, uh, recent published art, uh, art uh, paper, also from a, a Spanish uh, doctor, San Ruiz, uh, uh, fibers the use of uh, dual antibiotic in revision, of a reduction rate from, from for, uh, a reduction and incidence rate from four four percent to zero percent is a very high reduction. Dual antibiotic in revision knee surgery, but wow. maybe Pedro is is right in in his uh, uh, answer because the, the studies are totally heterogen heterogenic. Sometimes it's knee, total knee, total revision, hip, and maybe we need to stratify this. Absolutely. And, and Pedro, let me ask you this. If there was another study that was being conducted, let's say it was 10,000 or 11,000 or 15,000 patients, given the fact that you have successfully been able to recruit 3,000, is that of interest to you as well? Or do you believe that you've already sufficiently answered the question that your personal involvement in these sorts of large studies would, know, would now be limited? Or would you be still interested in doing even potentially larger studies? We are interested in, in, uh, in larger studies. And in fact, we are designing uh, a study with uh, the same study, but, uh, but with uh, gentamicin as the uh, antibiotic in the cement. Oh, superb. Excellent. Um, realizing we're a little bit over, but I wanted to make sure that um, if there's opportunities for anyone else who might have a comment or a question that you wanted to raise with the panel, uh, please do. Um, just to make sure we get everyone's thoughts before we close out. These are purposefully a bit smaller. Yes, Ernesto. John, only uh, one question regarding antibiotic load in cement. Uh, the dilution capacity of different uh, cements, different traits are the same, or it is a better dilution capacity of any type of cement. You, what do you think about it? Well, there is uh, there are a study because um, I I, I worried about the the cement brands because I I think that all the surgeons need to have uh, knowledge about the the cement cementation technique cementation and also the fabrication of cementation because mm -hmm. totally the, the brands are totally different. Yeah. There are a study that I have in, in my hands. is a, an old study from 1987 that the reduction, the, the, the dilution of the gentamicin is two or three fold higher depending of the brands. There are different studies, but the brands are totally different and we need to know uh, the different properties of different brands. And, and this is can... can uh, it could be a factor that the studies are with different results. We did, yes, totally agree with this. The brand is very important and different. Yeah, superb. Listen, I mean, the reality is we can only begin these discussions, you know, and I can't thank you both as presenters for sharing where we have come and how far we've come and where we have to go as we think about both the antibiotic irrigation uh, opp opportunities, not even anti antiseptic irrigation opportunities, as well as the antibiotic loaded cement. It seems to me that we do have an opportunity uh, to be doing something on a global level. We have enough global expertise uh, that we could be launching. And I congratulate you also, Pedro, for you know leading some of this work. Um, and obviously, uh, hugely thankful to uh, Joanne and Ernesto for uh, continuing to drive evidence and continuing to push forward uh, in these areas. I might leave the last comment uh, to Joanne and then Ernesto to close out this session. Joanne? 
my last comment. Yes, please. Um, my last comment, comment that uh, we need to collaborate. Okay. We have the also. we have the same we have the same comment. Yeah, the same all. comment. We need to collaborate <laughs> also with also with Pedro and uh, people from Catalonia and from Spain because uh, Pedro work in a in a hospital with very high uh, level and well conducted studies. He's a leader uh, in knee in knee surgery, mm -hmm. like uh, Xavi Pelfort is is also in the audience. But uh, we need your help, maybe, because uh, you are methodologically impeccable, no? because you are very mm, well known and we have, we have the, the possibility and the resources to design a well, a well conducted and well designed study. And we have the interest and also the possibilities because we work in a very high uh, hospital and, and not not our not only our hospital our community I speak uh, uh, about Catalonia and with uh, very well experienced surgeon like uh, Dr Ernesto Guerro that he conducted uh, like uh, principal investigator uh, studies like hip attack and health and and bueno, we we are totally ready for your uh, help and advice and not only us. Uh, maybe more hospitals around Spain and Catalonia. Ernesto, if you can. Yes, the, <laughs> same the, same. Comment, the same comment to all, the same comment to Mo. It is necessary to demonstrate if these uh, procedures are really, really a great help to prevent these tragedies, these devastating complications. Uh, we want you to commit uh, more if it is possible to do uh, large serious viral mass control trials regarding these two issues here. Yeah, and I think that's 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 the future. I think uh, for those of you who have joined us today, I, I think we can you know certainly think nationally and internationally as we grow this. I mean, those are things that we should be doing, and there's really no excuse for us not to try uh, as we move forward. But I thank you both, and I thank all of you for taking some time out of your day and your evening for some of you. Uh, to spend time with us today and we'll continue this discussion uh, and we look forward to collaboration as we move forward. So to all of you have a wonderful evening or the rest of your day. Thank you again.